Uh, so hi everyone. Today we'll be discussing about what are DQNs, that is deep Q networks in reinforcement learning, with examples and codes. So we'll also try to train open air gyms, uh, mountain car environment using DQNs and see what are the results. So let's get started. So before that, I've already covered basics of reinforcement learning. What are MABs, contextual bandits, Monte Carlo, temporal difference learning, what skew learning, reinforced algorithm, etc. So this time we'll be discovering about a very important algorithm uh, and a breakthrough algorithm in the field of reinforcement learning using which the DeepMind team trained their Atari games like Tetris and uh, Donkey Kong etc. So DQNs are, belongs to the family of value based methods in reinforcement learning. So previously in my previous video I discussed about what is reinforced algorithm which was from the family of action based functions. So what is the difference between the two? Uh, so in case of reinforced algorithm, we are trying to predict the probability for actions that an agent can take. While in case of uh, DQNs, what we would be doing is that uh, we would be trying to predict the value, uh, Q value for a given action. And then eventually using the Q value and the policy that we choose like epsilon greedy or greedy using the combination of the two, we would be choosing the action to be taken. So in case of reinforced, it was directly the action that we get. But in case of DQNs, we first need to calculate the Q value. Then we using the policy, we get the action. So DQN and DQN, the Q stands for Q learning. Q learning is basically an off policy temporal difference method in reinforcement learning. All this I've already explained in my previous video, but just giving you a brief. So in case of a off policy temporal difference learning, temporal difference learning, the rewards that we get uh, are immediate. So uh, in case of a current action that we take for a current state, we uh, we, uh, we are able to calculate an estimated reward then and there only for the future as well. So for example, there are 100 steps that are to be taken to reach to a final uh, uh, terminal state in a particular environment and you are at the fifth state. So in case of temporal difference, what we would be doing is that we will be uh, estimating the future reward that we might be getting by taking this action at the fifth step then and there only using some equation. Uh, this is uh, like this is not in case of Monte Carlo methods where we first uh, wait for the episode to end and then eventually we update all the Q values. Apart from that, what is off policy? So I've already discussed the difference between SARSA and Q learning. So in Q learning, off policy basically off policy, it is an off policy method, which basically means that uh, while estimating the reward for the current state and adding and adding the future reward as well. So for the current state, we use a policy X and for the future state reward estimation, we can use a policy Y. So the two policies can change. It is not mandatory that we take up a single policy and use it for both. So in, when we would be updating the Q value for a particular state action pair, uh, one thing that we can do is that uh, for the current state, we can use a different policy and for estimating the reward that we might get from the future, we can use an, a different policy. So in case of first case, we can use an epsilon greedy. And in, uh, and in estimating the reward from the future, we can use a greedy policy. So off policy means that. So DQNs are basically estimating uh, Q values for a given action uh, state pair. And using that, we can estimate uh, which action we should be taking. So in, uh, to know more about DQNs, you can go to my previous video on Q learning. You will be able to understand. So now coming to uh, coming back to our present blog, uh, we would be trying to train an environment from open AI gym called as the mountain car. So let me explain briefly about what is this whole environment. So in this uh, case, there is a car that needs to reach the top of the hill mountain where we have a flag here. Now the case is that the acceleration is limited. So directly it can't climb up the whole hill. So in this case, what it need to do is that it need to rock back and forth so that it generates some momentum and eventually reaches the flag. So we need to make, train the agent in such a way that it learns when it should go back, uh, take a stride and then go ahead uh, and, uh, and climb the mountain. So this is the whole environment. So there are two terminal states in this particular environment. One is when the uh, car reaches the flag and other when the number of steps that are taken is 200. Then the episode automatically ends. So the car needs to reach the flag before completing 200 steps. Apart from that, the reward system is quite easy. Uh, when uh, For any state other than uh, when it reaches the flag, the reward is minus one. And when it reaches the flag, it is zero. Uh, there are three actions that are possible. Uh, go left, uh, take a left acceleration, take a right acceleration or do nothing. Apart from that, the state space consists of two elements. One is the velocity and other is the vertical height at which the car is present. State is basically one d array with two elements and action is, uh, is three actions possible. So action space has three actions possible. So let's get started with the codes now. 
first of all we will be importing all the required libraries so you can see that we have imported uh, pygame also for visualizing the whole environment as we did the last time uh, tensorflow for designing a dqn and dq for implementing experience sleep play so what is that uh, experience sleep play i will uh, explain you later in the post so uh, dq is nothing but a doubly ended queue the queue is coming from straight from the data structures that we have read about stack or list queues so doubly ended queue means that we can do insertions and deletions from both the points of the queue that's the whole logic experience simply what it is i will be explaining you uh, in the meantime now next we will be defining our gym environment so mountain car we have defined input shape is the shape of the state space so as i told you it is a 1d array with two elements and num action is equal to 3 because total number of actions possible is 3 next we define a dqn so dqn is a shallow neural network as you can see that which in takes the state space and gives you an output as q value for possible actions for the for the particular state so you can see that we have not implemented any activation function and that is the whole reason because q value can be uh, any number apart from that uh, the loss function that you are following is mean squared error so now we will be declaring a few constants as well here you can see that number of episodes state batch replays a dq uh, with maximum length of 2000 epoch Alpha and gamma uh, are the constants that we will be using in a Bellman equation while we will be updating the Q values. So I will be, ex uh, I think I have already explained this earlier. I will be giving you a brief on this. So let's get started. So let's uh, start the training loop. Uh, as and when we start an episode, we first of all reset the environment to get the state to an initial state, which is mostly random. Now we feed this initial state into the uh, value network, which gives us the Q values for all the possible actions. Now depending upon the epsilon value that we have, epsilon initially is one. As you can see that gradually we will decay this value so that as the model starts training, uh, we would wish the model to make more exploiting decisions than exploration decisions. So it will become more greedy as we move ahead. So depending upon the epsilon value, we would be choosing between either greedy action or random action. Now we will be inserting this action to get to the next state reward and done status. Done status basically means that whether the episode has ended or not. And then we will be up appending state action reward next state and done flag into replay memory so i will tell you why we are doing this now once the replay memory size is bigger than the batch size so batch size i think it's 200 uh, we will be applying gradient tape and then we will be randomly batching out from the replay memory few samples uh, for the current state as we have uh, st uh, stored current state and next state as well we will calculating the q values for all the actions and similarly for the next state also we are doing the same thing and then here we will be implementing the bellman equation so Bellman equation I've already explained, but again, I will be explaining it. So the Q value for a state action pair gives equals to Q value for the state pair action plus alpha into, uh, into reward, reward that we are getting plus gamma, alpha and gamma we have already declared earlier, uh, value, uh, state value action for the future minus uh, value function for the state action pair for the current state. So this is the whole Bellman equation that we have here. You can see the explanation for all the values. So this is the same thing that we have implemented in this particular action, uh, equation that is actual underscore Q underscore value one. Now the loss would be calculated between predicted Q value one and actual Q value one that we were expecting. So makes sense. So the mean squared error would be calculated in Q value one that the network is predicting and actual underscore Q value one, which uh, should be the actual value. So in this way, we, uh, we would be training our model to reduce this loss between actual Q value that I was expecting because of the Bellman equation and the predicted value by the network. Now using the gradient tapes that we have declared earlier, we will be, uh, we will be back propagating into the neural network. And as you can see then after every 100 epochs, we are decaying the epsilon value as I'm telling you that after every 100 epoch, the model will converge to take more greedy decisions. So, so this is the whole thing. Uh, now couple of things wonder what is Bellman equation that I've already discussed with you in my previous video. So basically Bellman equation is an important part of the temporal difference learning. So as I told you that uh, we are not waiting for the episode to end to estimate for the future reward. So this, using this equation, we are trying to incorporate the future reward as well using this alpha and then the values present in the square brackets. This whole concept of Bellman equation. Now what is the need of experience replay? So this is quite interesting. So first of all, we need to understand what is catastrophic forgetting. So in case, uh, so usually when we train a reinforcement learning agent, uh, by default, the, the the usual flow is that you take an action, you got a reward, you provide a feedback to the network, you again take an action, you get a reward, you again provide a feedback. So 
one sample at a time we are training the whole network now in case of complex networks this can lead to catastrophic forgetting that means the model might get confused and start taking similar actions for a similar looking states which can lead to fatal uh, fatal rewards so in for example assume that we are at a state s when you take an action a and you got great results great rewards now you get a state very similar to s that is s1 the model might start taking the same action a which might yield to very bad rewards on s1 which is very similar now in this case the model will get confused ki actually what should i do should i be taking a uh, a or should i be taking a so here you can see that uh, because of we are updating the network uh, after every sample the model is not able to train properly so in this case action uh, experience replay come into the picture so what we do in experience replay uh, first of all instead of single updates we would be doing batch updates so the case of the zigzag manner of the loss uh, should get reduced apart from that the model would be updated uh, trained with mix of new and old memory so it shouldn't be the case that we are training it with just the most recent samples but we are training it the previous samples also so it won't be the case that the batch uh, the data that we are training the model would always change so it will have a mix of previously seen experiences as well as the new experiences and that is why we are implementing and that is why experience replay is implemented using a dq so in case of a dq uh, you take a very big length like 2000 and if the batch size is 200 so what happens is once the dq length reaches 2000 what happens is that uh, the new memories are pushed in and older memories are pushed out so as you know the concept of queues they are based on principle of fifo that is first in first out so uh, you will be taking random samples and eventually the batch that we are taking from this 2000 samples dq is also getting updated with new memories but they also consist of old memories as well so when the new uh new training sample is generated it is pushed in and the older ones are popped out because of the fifo uh mechanism that queues work on and hence the dq is able to maintain mix of old and new memories together now the last segment would be to visualize the whole results using pi game so i have already discussed this whole code snippet in my one of my previous videos in critical length so i won't be going doing it again so you can see uh, in my previous video how to render open ai gym environments you can follow that here are the results So let's uh, see how the results are. So the model, so that car starts from this uh, particular point, it goes back, uh, climbs a little of mountain, and again tries to reach the mountain, and it is just missing the flag by a whisker. As you can see that, so the model is trained. Uh, I feel so, it's quite good, and I think if I have given some more time, it would have reached the flag as well. So you can see that how it is working. Now my two cents on the whole training that I have observed. while training i saw observed a lot of instability also so the loss was sometimes 0.04 then it reaches 0.6 then 0.2 0.3 something of gans that i got a feeling of so eventually i uh, as mentioned uh, on many websites that this is quite common with reinforcement learning problems apart from that there is a method of uh, having two dqs one is target dq and other is a current dq for, for uh, maintaining this training instability so you can explore on these grounds on the internet you will find something i haven't covered this in my this particular post now uh, talking about the differences between value based methods that is dq uh, uh, dqn and action based methods that is reinforced learning reinforced algorithm and reinforcement learning so first a difference that i observed uh, is that dqn doesn't require the episode to end for training while reinforced algorithm do require an episode to end as we saw in our last video and last post that is why reinforced algorithm might not be a great choice for non episodic problems where the episode never ends apart from that if you have observed dqns have an overhead of experience replay and for target and training dqns as well for maintaining stability in the training while uh, and to avoid catastrophic forgetting while there are no issues in reinforced algorithms you can go straight away implement your uh, neural network and you don't require uh, stuff like experience replay and uh, two dqns to train 